Hey, phone sites users. So I'm going to walk you through the process of how you can use Zapier with your phone sites page using the new native integration that we have set up with Zapier as opposed to using a Zapier webhook. Now, we have a few videos that we do walk through that process of where you can add a Zapier webhook through the settings tab under uh, post webhooks field right here. So definitely refer to those videos if that's the way you want to go about using Zapier to integrate your phone size page or to connect your phone size page with perhaps uh, CRM or Google Sheets or uh, Outlook, Out Gmail, whatever third-party app that you want to be using. But for the purpose of this video, though, I want to walk through that process of how to use the new native integration that we have set up. So I'm going to walk on over to config for this particular site here, which is a pretty bare bones site, but uh, for the purpose of this video, it'll do. So if we scroll under the third party integration section here and click through the zap here option, that's going to um, take us to the page where we're going to get what's called an API key that will connect phone sites over to Zapier. Now, if you've ever noticed before, we have third party integrations already set up for MailChimp, Aweber, and Twilio. We just recently added in the Zapier uh, API integration and then also a Google reCAPTCHA API integration. Now, uh, through a different video that I will create and share with you guys, I will walk through the process of setting a reCAPTCHA up on your page. But for this video, let's focus on Zapier. So let's click through Zapier here and let's go ahead and generate a new Zapier API key. So I generated that key. I'm going to go ahead and just click in here to copy that. And you can see that it's copied. And I would just uh, click through this tab here to go over to Zapier. And I'm going to be invited to the phone site's um, uh, invitation page here to, to add this into Zapier. So I'm going to go ahead and select Accept, Invite, and Build a Zap. Now, if you tried to go to Zapier.com and did a search for phone sites, it probably won't show up yet just because right now it, this integration is set up by invitation only, uh, I believe. So you'll definitely want to go through this link here in phone sites. Okay, so now here on, let's see here, under my apps. Uh, let's see, where did I go? Connect a new account. Uh, under my apps, I want to select phone signs in this search here. And then let's go ahead and bring us to a page where we have to add in that API key. So drop that in there, select yes, continue. And then this will now be added under my connections. So these are all the apps that I have connected uh, into Zapier, right? So we can go ahead and test this out. That's all good. And then I can rename this too, because I would set up a different integration for different sites. So in this case, this is my accordion sections landing page. So let's just go ahead and rename this. So I'm going to go ahead and click right in that and it'll let me rename this. This will come in handy that way. Um, as I set up, the next uh, API integration here, then I can go in and rename the, the next one. Okay. And then that comes in handy for when I set up a zap later, then I can find the appropriate uh, connection. This will make more sense here to second in terms of finding the right connections once I actually set up that zap. Okay. So that's all set up. Now what we want to do is let's go ahead and make sure that we save this over here in phone sites. So we've got that all set up for our API key, and then we can go and set up our first zap using this phone sites connection. So let's go ahead and click into make a zap. And then I'm going to go ahead and type in here phone sites. And select continue. And so I just mentioned before that you want to give it an appropriate name back on that previous page, right? Uh, if I set up multiple API key connections for different landing pages, then you would expect to see many of those listed. So let's go ahead and do that just so that you can see exactly what I'm talking about here. So let's go ahead and go to dashboard. Let's go find another landing page. Let's just click into that one. 
go to config, go through Zapier, generate new API key, copy that, and let's see, let's go back over here to Zapier, go to My Apps, connect to a new account. I... <clears throat> We'll add in this API key here. And then now you can see there are multiple connections. So then I would call this one, is that one G code rules? Actually, this is G code zero to 100 challenge. Let me just test that. Okay. And then if we walk back over here and can we refresh this? Well, let me refresh that. I wanted to show you that there will now be two options that are listed in there. There we go. So you can see now I have two different options in here and it's actually the accordion sections one that I wanted to continue with this zap because that's what we're setting up back over here for that first funnel that we're working on, right? We were under the config tab for accordion sections. So let's proceed here. Let's continue on with the accordion sections link page. So select continue and test and review. And now I need to submit some data through this. Actually, it already has some data that came through. Okay. So there was a fake test that I submitted through earlier today as I was testing out that reCAPTCHA and creating a video for you guys. So let's we'll just use that data there. So uh, I'm already opted into using lead A here because I've selected that radio button. So let's go ahead and go on to the, the, this action step that we're gonna set up here. So let's go ahead and click in here. And now I need to find the next app. So let's assume that I was gonna put it in like a CRM or Google Sheets or something like that. And that's where I would search for that app here if I don't see it listed up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and select Google Sheets. And I'm going to select create spreadsheet row and then select continue. And now I need to find the appropriate uh, account. So if I had multiple Google accounts listed in here, I would see one, two or three in here in terms of like the one, two or three accounts that I have, but I only have one Google Sheets account associated with Zapier. So let's go ahead and connect to that. Select continue and then select my Google Drive. And then now we got to find um, spreadsheets and it's going to list by most recently used spreadsheet that I have in my Google Drive for that account that I selected up here. And then let's select the worksheets. I only have one worksheet in here. This is going to be the, the worksheet that we'll select. And then now I have, and I'll show you here in a second, I have three columns added in there, name, email, landing page. So let's, uh, let's hop on over there and I'll show you really quickly. So I have name, email, and landing page, right? And if I put in a fourth one over here, which let's just uh, call this like, I don't know, demo column or something like that. Just so I can show you that you can now have Zapier pull that in too if you needed to add in additional columns. So there you go. So there's that column. I'm actually not gonna use that. I just wanted to show you that really quickly. If you ever find that you need to add in additional fields for your landing page, you'll need to add in additional columns back in Google Sheets if you're connecting this into Sheets, for example. And again, you can connect your landing page to a CRM if you want. It does not have to be Google Sheets. Okay, so let's hop back and over to our connection here in Zapier. So under name, now we got to map these. So this right here is pulling in these spreadsheet columns. We need to map these column names to fields in phone side. So let's map the name field. So name, click right in here. These are the options that came in from this uh, API connection that we made earlier. So let's go ahead and map that to name. And then let's map email email and then let's map landing page to page so that's our landing page that we're using and I'm just going to ignore demo column 
So if you're asking yourself, what are these fields that I just clicked into? Like, what is this data that you see right here? Well, this data that shows up right here, this is data that came through from this step here, which is that API connection that we had going back to our config tab where we set this up, right? So whenever data was submitted through this landing page the last time, that data is pulled through from the API and then pulled into Zapier. And then I have that as available data to map right here. And it's important to map this that way any subsequent data will be able to map through to the appropriate fields to my Google Sheets file. So let's go ahead and select continue. And let's test and review. So then I expect to find in Sheets here in a second, this name, email, and landing page showing up. So let's go test that out. There we go. So name, email, landing page. So let's go ahead and add in another row directly through the landing page. You'll see how this now begins to flow through Zapier. So I'm done. So I want to go ahead and select, I don't need to retest that, but let's go ahead and select retest and continue. And let's turn this on. It's important to turn this on before you actually uh, run your ad to your landing page or you know, share it organically on Facebook. That way your Zap will begin to collect that data. If you don't have that Zap turned on, then it won't send the data through to the CRM or Google Sheets, wherever you have it connected. So let's just call this in sections you oh, have these names that make sense to me so i'm going to go ahead and click on this little orange symbol and i want to show you that this is going to show up under my zaps once this is done refreshing so there you go so this is turned on i would want to make sure that i had that turned on like i mentioned before so that's on all right guys if you have any questions please feel free to reach out Thanks.